Okay, hello everybody. This is a bit weird for such a small room, but I'll try to do my best not to scream or say anything inappropriate. Um, <laughs> it's a good start. Okay, I'll do my best. Um, first of all, a big thank you to Christine who approached me um, and the team for allowing me to speak here. Um, I gave this talk at Berlin Giquette's, so I presume most of you haven't seen it, considering the room is full of men. Um, <laughs> so. My name is Lila and I'm a creative director. Um, I'm not a coder, I'm not a programmer, I'm not a developer, I don't work in the tech department, I'm in the creative department. Um, and my background's quite traditional, so I come from an ad background, I'm an advertising person. Um, and um, I just started working at Razorfish. Razorfish is a digital agency. Um, it's an international agency with uh, offices in Berlin and Frankfurt. Um, and the reason I started working for them is because over my career I've started um, doing that transition, like most ad people, from traditional to uh, digital. And I know digital tech is a bit of a uh, faux pas, but I'll call it a digital agency because that's how Razorfish presents itself. Um, and um, with my background in advertising, um, it's really about telling stories. So that's why I'm here uh, today to talk about he how technology enables greater storytelling. Um, and it's quite a philosophical um, talk. It's not about um, any kind of tech fads or anything like that. It's really about connecting uh, with yourself and your life experiences because that's actually where most of the stories come from. Um, and it's about using technology to be able to talk or share these stories. So um, this is my life. It's probably your lives as well. Um, dealing with all the various problems that technology gives us. So um, it's a battle. But um, before you even start that battle, you need to know what to do when you go up to the battle for the line, the battle front, because you want to know what your story is before you start delving into the various opportunities that technology can give you. So I'm going to talk about three things today. Um, what is storytelling, um, the role of technology, and how to make that great. Um, so storytelling. Storytelling is the sharing of events with words, images, sounds, and or experiences, sometimes with improvisation or embellishment, depending if you're watching comedian or something like that. Anyway, so experiences is really what I want to be talking about because um, life uh, gives us the opportunity to live, um, and it's about these experiences um, that you know give us the opportunity to tell stories. So let's do this. Um, the role of technology. Well, um, this is a, a, a quote from the Bill Hicks story. He's a comedian. I like to watch comedies because they're more depressing than I am. So there's a big reason why I like to, to quote this guy. And the inner self is very connected to the outer self. So with the role of technology today, come in. Um, it's really about um, how you can connect your life experiences in the real world and communicate that through the role of technology and what the internet gives you. So... Um, this is a, a quote from uh, uh, the uh, Choose Your Own Adventure books that some of you might know if you're from the States. If not, sorry. But it's basically the beginning of these books, and it always starts like this. Beware and warning. This book is different from other books. You and you alone are in charge of what happens in this story. So there's all these dangers and, 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 and you know, adventures and things that one starts when you, when you read this book. And what it does really is allow you to choose uh, how you want the story to go. So, you know, it might send you to page 40 or page 56, and you kind of get to, uh, to, to really uh, uh, dictate how the story goes, and that's how our lives are, is, uh, that's how our lives are these days um, because of technology, because it really gives you all this opportunity to use the internet and use technology in the way you want to. It's no longer linear. It's really about picking and choosing how you want to tell your story because there's so many layers of opportunity. Um, this is... Uh, actually <laughs> one of these Choose Your Own Adventure books uh, shown to you how you can start from the beginning and all the various choices lead to another thing. It looks kind of like a user flow, you know, that might be common to you guys. Um, so uh, um, this is one of those books. It's one of those cho Choose of Your Own Adventure books and um, there's no story on it really. You have no idea what it's about because if you don't actually have a story to tell, you've got no cover. Um, and this is what it looks like obviously when you've decided to put all the pieces together. So you've got a title, you've got imagery, you can already start delving into what this is about. So um, basically my point is, is that stories should have a comma and not a period. Um, this is a quote from a guy named Gaston Legorbrou. He's uh, an ad guy and um, he has a very nice uh, uh, talk online called The Shift from Storytelling to Storyscaping. And um, I, I recommend you watching it because it really is about um, taking a story and managing to uh, uh, bring it to life through various 
paths, so it's not a long, you know, it's just not one path. So um, how do we make this great? Well, I'm going to start talking a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, the fear of missing out. Would you like a question? Um, it's on SlideShare. It already is on SlideShare, considering I gave it to a bunch of women the last time I, <laughs> last time I gave this talk. Um, yeah, so 56% of the people are using social media, uh, it's who use social media experience FOMO, so the fear of missing out. This is quite a common phenomenon today um, with Facebook. Um, everyone's posting and everything. What they're doing, uh, you know, drinking champagne on a yacht or, you know, flying jets or, I mean, that's what people in advertising do anyway. Um, so it's, it's quite, you know, an opportunity that, like, um, I watch it and I see, well, why am I not on a yacht? Why am I not really, you know, in Miami hanging out with the peeps? So I wonder what is all this, you know, worth? <laughs> so um, uh, uh, John Maida, who's actually an amazing um, uh, designer uh, at MIT, um, basically he says in advertising, storytelling is too often story yelling. So these days it's really about fitting it into 140 characters, making sure that that picture uh, really meets that moment that you've lived. But there's no depth. And really what's important to me is connecting more to my analog self um, and being able to have experiences and then use those experiences, influences to the stories that I tell. Um, you might recognize him, though he has changed. He's changed. He's growing a mustache. Um, I don't know if you've noticed. That's the latest that's going around on the internet. This is about story yelling. This is really, I mean, I guess I should have used someone like Miley Cyrus. I should have updated it. I'm sorry, guys, that you guys have to look at a prepubescent teen. Um, but... <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to say with this is that all those moments that you're capturing is not the way stories are told. These are just snippets. They're not real. They're just moments that no one actually cares about. Um, so how does technology actually enable me to tell a great story? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, technology influences how we learn stories, how we tell stories, and who hears them. And this is actually quite an interesting or poignant part because um, if you don't have a story to tell that you've you know, picked up from a, a dinner discussion or something that happened to you over the weekend or on holiday, you actually have no uh, opportunity to delve deep into into the story. And it's really about, um, because especially when you're working on, on, on bigger projects, um, like I do myself, um, I'm not going to be able to tell my story in a snippet on one banner, uh, one page of a website, and all that kind of stuff. So you really have to think about the whole picture. Um, Exactly, and then obviously there's various other tools and technology like the, the, the equipment that you use, be it uh, um, smartphone cameras or, or, or video cameras or whatever to actually capture those moments and then the types of tools that you can use online, the software, the programming to be able to then communicate that story. Um, this is a swing. Um, I was on a swing about two years ago last time, which is um, quite a long time, but probably not as long as the last time you guys were on a swing. It's a lot of fun, so I recommend it. Um, this guy, um, I forgot his name, uh, is an artist uh, who in San Francisco started hanging up all these swings around the urban areas. I don't know if you've um, seen it. He basically saw an opportunity to give you know people a moment of fun in, in the streets, and um, you can see it online. Uh, he got picked up by Coca-Cola, so this is a, an, ex an example of how a brand took someone's story, he basically hung swings in urban areas and gave people something to do and experience in the real life, um, and it's now been picked up by a brand like Coca-Cola. I do apologize for the uh, some circumstances where brands pick up something just for the sake of picking something up. I apologize profusely. However, there are moments in life that can be a lot of fun, and um, brands uh, that I work with really try to delve in and uh, uh, enhance your life. Um, the work I do at Razor Fish is that. Um, so it's, it's really about uh, uh, giving you a, a function and a reason to be. So um, to round up, I've probably sped through this. I said I'd be 20 minutes. It was probably about, all about seven. Um, it <laughs> life inspires stories and technology shares them, and that's really one that I wanted to communicate with you guys today. And I hope you enjoyed it. Any questions? Have you hung any swings anywhere? I personally have not hung swings anywhere. I was supposed to read the question. I, yeah, how many swings have I hung? None. <laughs> but I've swung on swings. It's, I def the one in Mauer Park's a lot of fun. Anybody else? There's no complicated code that I have to explain. I know it's probably very difficult for you to, <laughs> to grasp where I'm going with this. But um, and all in all, I think there's a, a very interesting bridge to be made between um, uh, uh, the technology that's available and the ideas that are created to you know, bring together a, a story, and, and, and brands really need to, to grasp that. So you can find me online. 
there. I've worked in an ad agency as well. And I hope it was a good experience. Um, <laughs> that's another topic. Um, one thing that I noticed is you, you said like your talk wouldn't be about technological pads, mm -hmm. but in my experience, especially people from the classical mm -hmm. ad agency mm -hmm. types, usually are really prone to mm -hmm. hopping on the latest technological mm -hmm. fad. And mm -hmm. Which means usually they see some new technology and then they devise some sort of campaign for it instead of the other way around, mm -hmm. which is something to innovate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, how would you suggest um, do people gravitate more towards the story and then choose the technology instead of the other way around? Um, it's a good question. How to? I'm gonna have to try to retrofit your question. How to uh, start with a story and then work with technology to communicate it in a brand world, right? Um, it's a very good question. I think it doesn't happen enough. Um, it's uh, my uh, aim to make it work more. I think um, a lot of ad guys don't have a lot of spare time, um, so uh, they don't have the opportunity to live out. So if they're you know on BuzzFeed and they see the latest you know gadget, they like to implement it into their campaign. Um, advertising uh, <laughs> still has some way to go, especially in the German market. But I think um, where Razorfish is really good is that they really try to. Um, uh, 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 find that sweet spot where marketing um, meets technology and um, that's really about um, working together to make sure uh, that you use the right technology to tell your story and it's not it's not the other way around. Um, Razorfish uh, does actually develop quite a few innovative products. Um, we work for like uh, clients like Audi, for example, um, uh, where they just uh, created an amazing like uh, touch screen experience in a showroom um, where because cars were, uh, or car houses were um, outside normally, like they're big, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, places where you buy cars. <laughs> huh? Dealership, thank you. Um, dealerships are normally outside of urban cities, um, and they wanted to bring that experience to the urban city, so they wanted to bring it into the smack in the middle of the city, so they devised basically this whole experience that you can, uh, uh, you know, ch change your colors and, and experience the car. And, and I think that type of thing is, is quite new because they had to create, actually, a technology to make it work. Um, and I hope that answered your question. Anybody else? Well, a very big thank you for allowing me to talk here. I know it's, it's a little bit strange to talk to people who are not in your world. Um, but it's really about connecting the two because um, uh, it's not always uh, easy for people who have all this uh, uh, coding, programming talent to communicate their stories. So that's where the two are actually really good at um, coming together. So first of all, thank you very much. <laughs>